check me out on the root of all success with the real Jason Duncan. It was my absolute pleasure being here. I feel like I have dropped some amazing entrepreneurial golden nuggets. Go and pick it up. Welcome to the root of all success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs unlocked success and how their stories can help you do the same. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason has built multi-million dollar businesses that have been featured in Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine. His life's mission now is helping entrepreneurs live what he calls hashtag the exit lifestyle. Introducing TEDx speaker, mastermind leader, author, entrepreneur, cigar aficionado, motorcycle enthusiast, and host of the root of all success, the real Jason Duncan. The The real real Jason Jason Duncan. Duncan. Welcome to another episode. I am the real Jason Duncan. I've got a great episode for you today. I've got Gogo Betke today. She is the Gogopreneur. Here's here's her story. So in 03, she leaves Romania with 200 bucks in her pocket, comes to the States. She started in real estate here in the U.S. in 2011. She had no sphere of influence, no contacts, barely spoke English. She had six bucks to her name at the time, and she started to build an empire using primarily the power of social media. So she got into Facebook groups and pages, or actually, no, maybe not groups back then, but Facebook pages uh, before everybody else did. She's done now over $120 million dollars in personal transactions. And her team last year was only a few hundred thousand dollars short of doing $2 billion in sales and transactions. She is uh, part of the top 3% realtors in the nation. She's the number one social media realtor in Michigan, the number 16 social media realtor in the nation. She's among the top 155, 125 most influential people, according to Success Magazine. She's known as the social media queen. She has over 65,000, 66,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, she's the founder of GoGo's real estate team, and she has two online boot camps. We're going to be talking about on the show today, her boot camps for realtors, specifically how to get into real estate and how to do it right in the social media world. She is a two times two comma club award winner, and she also has her own television show that comes out this month on Roku called Go Go Preneur. She's with EXP. She's been with them since 2018. She has over a thousand agents in her real estate team, all from U.S., Canada, Mexico, France, Brazil, Spain, and Colombia. And today she's part of the 0.02% top influencers at EXP. This is a great lady. You're going to really enjoy the conversation today. Let's welcome Gogo Betke to the show. Gogo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. That was an amazing intro. Well, thank you. I try. I've got a great voiceover guy. When I grow up, I want to be a TEDx speaker, so congratulations. Well, you know what? Once you get on one TED stage, they just start coming. I've been invited to be on three more now that I got on one and got on the first one, not by accident, because I don't think the accidents happen, but I met the organizer of this TED event at a, at a club here in Nashville. He followed me on LinkedIn, came to town, wanted to meet because we followed each other. And I didn't know he was part of, I didn't know he organized TED. And we had a couple drinks, we're hanging out, had this great conversation. And at the end, I said something about, yeah, I want to kind of get on TED stage at some point. He goes, you do know that I'm the organizer of TEDx Wilmington. I went, no. He goes, well, yeah, you went on stage, you're in. So that's how I got on my first stage. And now now they're starting to come in uh, twosies, threesies. That's so awesome. I can introduce maybe you to it out there. Maybe the universe will listen. Yes. Well, I, I will. I will make an introduction. I'm going to actually write a note here. Oh, Intro. Yeah. Go. Go to Dan. So Dan. Dan's a Dan's a great dude. You'll you'll like him. So you and I met at an event we both spoke at here in Nashville not too long ago. And uh, I want to tell you, but before I ask my first question, I got to tell you. So as I'm sitting, I'm sitting at this event. And I'm, I'm speaking at lunch and I don't really know much about like who's speaking when it wasn't super organized in terms of like this person yeah. at this time. And I'm looking around and I'm just looking and I, I saw you. I mean, 
you you are an attractive lady. I don't think that has probably not that hasn't escaped your mind. So I, I saw you as I was looking around, and and I, and I noticed you, and you had two or three ladies with you, probably your assistants with you, and I thought I, I bet she's going to be a speaker. Because I didn't know you. I didn't have any idea. And then sure enough, I think whenever you got up on stage, they announced you had the whole thing. And there, this 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 lady walked up on stage and went, see, I was right. I was right. She was one of the speakers. <laughs> yeah, so good. good. It was, it was a, uh, that was actually my very first entrepreneurial event. Because um, I do speak a lot. And I, I, I spoke into 9,000 room agent, full with agents, right? But I have never spoken to entrepreneurs. So that was my very first event to speak to entrepreneurs. Well, you did great because my assistant was with me at that event. And at the end, we always kind of we do a debrief. How did it go? What would you think? Who'd you like? And and, and uh, she said, well, who was your favorite speaker? And I, I'm not even I'm not even saying this just because you're a guest on my show. I said it was go go. I think you killed it because you 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 were very like purposeful about what you spoke um, and you told your story. And it was memorable and it was action item. And I love what you talked about with VAs because I use VAs too. So yeah. all that stuff was really great. So you, she, she did great. You don't need me to tell you that, but, but I'm telling you. Thank you. I'm very like, so, um, I think looks sometimes confuse people because I do have this like, you know, I'm who I am. This little blondie. I like to dress up. I like to look pretty. But at the same time, I'm the biggest numbers nerd than you ever meet. So I think it's surprising to people sometimes to realize of how much numbers and trackers and you know how much how nerdy i am when it comes to business well you talked about with the va stuff you were talking about how you i don't remember specifically what you said but something to the effect of i did x number of hours of work last year because i multiplied it times my 14 vas and you were able to accomplish more than the average person you, obviously you know what i'm talking about so could you yeah. give us a taste of what you said there i'm, I'm calling you out because you're probably not prepared yeah, to talk. i mean about i don't know the exact numbers by heart i might have to write them down but pretty much the idea is number one whatever you are doing for a living right whatever money that you made in the end of the year you have to divide it with the amount of time that it take you to make that money right so then you know your hourly rate i like to calculate it with 40 hours a week but if you're talking to entrepreneurs here <laughs> Probably 90% of us don't have a healthy work at, you know, healthy work hours. Um, so you'll, you'll probably work more than 40, but be reasonable with yourself on whatever money you made, calculate the amount of time. If you worked 40 hours a year, uh, sorry, 40 hours a week, that's 2,080 hours a year. So if you made this much money, let's say you made $400,000 divided by 2,080, and then you'll find out what is your hourly rate. After you know your hourly rate, so after you calculate it, and you know that every hour that you work, you make 250 bucks, so you make $1,200 or $4,200, depending how much money you make, right? Then you know what's worth your time and what doesn't worth your time anymore, right? So then you need to start removing things from your calendar that A, doesn't make you the money, B, you suck at it, C, you might enjoy it, you might absolutely love doing it, but if it doesn't make you the money, you have to remove it from your calendar because it is not your time best spent. So now are these things need to be replaced? Does somebody have to do them? Yeah, it just doesn't have to be you. So now the next thing is, can this be done in person or can this be done online or does it need to be done in person, right? So I have two personal assistants that are physically with me. I have one that we call Cassandra, she's here. Um, she's our house assistant, right? So she helps me anything in my life physically, she's with me every single day. And then I have Christy, who's been with me for eight years. She lives in Michigan. Now I live in Florida, but she's my everything door. Like she's my operations director. Everything we do, any company we start, anything we do. So they are physically with me. All of my other people are virtual assistants and I have 20 some of them. Um, they're mostly from Brazil and then one from Pakistan. So now I said, okay, now I removed all of the things that I don't enjoy doing, all of the things that doesn't make me the money and all of the things that maybe I suck at it, right? And now I say, okay, can I work less and make the same amount of money or more, ideally, right? So then I reduce my time. Now I only work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. So this is why I'm here. If you ask me to do a podcast on a Thursday, sorry, can do. I'm retired on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I only work three days a week. So my working hours is 24 hours a week. So not only then I remove myself from the 40 hour week hour, I worked 24 hours, but I replaced myself with 17, I think at the time when I did the math, with 17 people that work 40 hours. So if you think about, I get done, so 17 times 40, 680 hours, plus my 24 hours a week, 704 hours of work done every single week. 
people need to go back and rewind that and listen to that again, because I know everything you said to be intuitively true, but to hear you on stage talk about that, it was like, damn, that, I mean, it's so right. That is what we're dealing with as, as entrepreneurs. If we can first pull ourselves out of the things that we don't, you know, you got to eliminate stuff, get to delegate stuff. But then if you can pull in VAs, you, you can do 700 plus hours of work a week. And so that's great. I think systems is also very important on top of having the actual human help, right? If you can sit, I mean, I hate saying out loud because I know some people look at it and I'm taking work away from someone, right? But I look at it as if a system can do it. A system is more reliable than a human. A system doesn't need vacations. A system doesn't get sick, right? So I look mm -hmm. at it, can this job, can this specific step in someone's job be done by a, an integration like a Zapier? Can it be done by creating a Calendly link? and automated where people just click into their calendar versus having to make phone calls and do the back and forth of like, hey, can, can you do it Tuesday at two? No, I can't. My kid has sack. Or how about Thursday at 11? No, I can't. Right? So instead of doing that, can we just do a link? Right? So people can do, do there. So I'm very systematic and I look at things of like, how can I make the most amount of money with the least amount of effort and expense? Right? And that's uh, not on board. I didn't even mention the year when I just had my assistant, just the two of us. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but I, I want to say I made 800,000. Um, and then after we hired all of the VAs and build the systems, we made close to three. So you made 20,000 to 300,000. Is that what you said? No, no I went from 800,000, making 800,000 to making 3 million. Oh, 20. Okay. Gotcha. The significant increase in revenue based on just bringing in other people to do extra things. You get more work done in less time. And you got more time for your family and, and you know what I mean? Like you actually have some time to live life. Cause what I got to is like, yeah, I made all this money, but I had no time to spend it. Yep. That that's and what I talk about all the time is the exit lifestyle. How do you live that lifestyle as if you've exited your business, but without exiting, how do you do that? And you're in many ways already doing what I teach so many of my clients to figure out how to do. How do you get down to 20 to 25 hours a week? That's the maximum hours a week you should be working as an entrepreneur is 20, 25 in the main thing. Now you can do other stuff. I the did main it. Thing that, yeah, you did it. Now my goal is 10, like I, 10 hours is what I want to get to. If I can, if I can create my, all the income that I need as an entrepreneur for my family and all my needs in 10 hours a week, that's the goal. Then those other 30 to 50 hours, I feel like filling with my time are my wealth generation are my big time money. That's where I go make the big money. Yes. So what are you doing besides just spending all that extra time with your family? Or do you have other ventures that you're doing besides real estate? Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> so uh, if you look around, uh, let me move my leg because I'm sitting down. It's so if you look around all of those files, let me not make sure I'm not dumping everything. So all of those files up there and then all of those files up there are all companies. So in my boredom during COVID, I, I got a bunch of ideas and, you know, acted on them. So I opened nine companies. <laughs> all together because I was, you know, I was like, oh, I can, what a great idea. I can do that. And then what a great idea. I can do that. And then, uh, so, you know, you live and learn. Um, one of my favorite saying is, um, do you know the enemy, enemy of good? Yes. The enemy Perfect. of good is yeah. great. Yeah. So most people will say bad. No, nope. the enemy of good is not bad. The enemy of good is great. Most people are like, but I'm doing so good. I'm good. Why would I do anything else? Right? Cause you could have it great. And all these things, some of, well, some of these things are great ideas and some of these things are good ideas. So the good ideas I'm shutting down this year. Back to that hourly rate. Okay. How do I, I don't want to sound, I'm just going to say it. Okay. If you can spend, let's say, let's say that in this specific business, it's a good idea. It was a, it was a good idea. Let's say in this specific business. It takes you eight hours a week to work on this business and makes you $4,000. Okay. You're like, okay, so I'll make 12 grand. Did I do the math right? For what's eight, yes. no, 16, 16 grand? Oh, 16, yes. 16. 16. So I did make 16,000 a month, but I end up working how many hours? If I worked eight hours, then it's 16, 32 hours. Yep. So 16 grand in the end of the month. 32 hours worth of work. 
Or I can go start three of my boot camps, takes me no time, because I have a sales team, right? And make the same amount of money. What should I what should I do, Jason? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Why do so many? Why do people keep working at the stuff that's only good? Why do people keep doing that? Because they don't know their hourly rate. Because if they knew their hourly rate, they would never do it again. Because it's stupid. I'm literally losing money if I keep spending eight hours a day on this desk that only makes me whatever five hundred bucks an hour, whatever it comes out to. That is absolutely freaking -nutely stupid when I know that my hourly rate in this business is 4200 bucks an hour. Where should I spend mm. my time? Yeah. Right? So just because something's a good idea, it's not worth to keep if it's stealing from a great idea. Now, when did you figure this out? When did you figure out your hourly rate? When did that when did that moment of realization happen for you? I haven't. I've, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think it was a, a an evolution. I think I'm the type of person that I, I think all the time, and I get ideas, and I want to act on it, right? But eventually, what happens is you are going to run out of time. And if you're an entrepreneur like me, you're going to work yourself into the grave because you're going to want to act on every single one of them, right? And then you're going to need to have some sort of a filter because if not, you're going to work yourself into the grave and that is not the idea with entrepreneurship, right? So it's like, okay, then if I need to have a filter to decide, am I going to act on this or not? What is that decision-making factor? Is it how I feel about it? Is it how much time it takes? Is it how much money it makes? Is it, what is it? Right. And they kind of all tie together. How much do I enjoy it and how much headache does it give me? Right. Because sometimes you're like, well, it's forty two hundred dollars, but I'm stressed out of my mind and I'm on whatever stress medication. Yeah. Right. Or you might say, oh, this is easy. Like, I'd rather make fifty thousand a month and I don't even have to answer the phone than have to make a hundred thousand and I'm stressed out of my mind. Right. So you're going to have to figure out what are those decision making factors for you. In the end of the day, I do work for money. And I feel like I handle stress very well. So that then the decision-making factor was for me, what's worth my time the best? Where am I going to do, where am I going to make the most amount of money for my family? And then, so I calculate hourly rate in all of my businesses. And if it doesn't make sense anymore, sometimes I might do a partnership. Someone else can do it and I'll just take a percentage. Sometimes I don't want to be involved at all. So I said, I just let somebody buy it or I'll just let it go altogether to the buy side. Um, and that's it. So like, that's one of the businesses I was an owner in. I no longer want to be an owner in cause it comes with liability and overhead and you know, all that. And so instead I will give them the database and they will give me an affiliate income. So I'm not owner. I have no downside whatsoever. I only have upside if and when my people use their services. So in 2003, you made the decision to to leave Romania and come to the United States. Was that a decision that you made of your own volition or do you feel like you were forced in that decision? Oh God, no, no, it was all on my own. Um, so in 2003, I was 21, I was in college, but my first recollection of going to America was when I was eight years old. So communism just ended in Romania and I, my dad came home with a color TV and two VCRs and I was watching an Eddie Murphy movie and I, it wasn't coming to America, it was uh, 48 hours. And I just thought he was so happy and, and just to me, he just seemed like the happiest person. And as an eight year old, I correlated to where he was at because I wasn't happy in my country, right? What was going on? So I was like, I thought he was happy because where he was at. So that is kind of like my first recollection. And I'm going to go wherever that man is at because he seemed so happy. And then fast forward when I was 21, I just wanted to go. I, and I was in college in third year and I was supposed second year. And in third year, I was supposed to pass an English exam and I didn't speak English at all. So I figured, I'm like, well, it would be easy if I go to a land where they speak it. I'm sure I'll pick it up fast. I'll go home, take my exam, life goes on. Um, the go home part is I didn't do. <laughs> I came and I stayed. I met my husband um, after two months coming to the U.S. on March uh, 17th, a lucky day. And we've been married ever since. So 20 year this year is going to be our 20th year on March 17th. And... Um, 
yeah, I stayed in America and then it became my American dream. Wow, that's that's awesome. So you came here to take an English exam <laughs> and then <laughs> never left. And your English is really good. So 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 well, good for you. It's much better than what it was twenty years ago. <laughs> we have no idea. It was so do you bad. do you still have family back in Romania? Oh yeah, everybody's back home. My parents are actually here now visiting, but other than that, everybody's back home in Romania. Yeah, my sister, her kids, grandparents, cousins, everybody. So you, so in 2003, you're in college. You come over here to do that. Then in 05, you meet you meet your your man who's going to be your husband. Uh, and congratulations! Oh, two, months. two months. Two months. Two months. Oh, two months. Oh, wow. So you meet him. Well, congrats on 20 years. That's, that's, uh, that's phenomenal. My wife and I will be celebrating 28 years this year, believe it or not. Oh, that's so, awesome. Congrats. Yeah. So, um, but, but so you meet, you meet your man, you guys, uh, get married, but in 11, so in 2011, you make a decision to go into real estate. So tell us about what happened between 03 and 2011. What were you doing in those years? So I like to call it process of elimination. What I'm not going to be when I grow up. <laughs> so I did all kinds of jobs. I've been, a, I came as an au pair, so living nanny. And then I worked in a jewelry store. I worked as a babysitter. After that, I worked in a jewelry store. I worked in a plastics. Um, no, I, I worked in a, a, a coding company in the warehouse, shipping and receiving. Then I went to um, a plastics department at NSF International. Then from there, I worked in a warehouse pretty much again. Uh, I entered PVC pipes into the database all day long. That was fun for testing. And then from there, I went I, I went a couple uh, levels up. So I ended up with a restaurant food safety auditor certification. <laughs> it's such a, I have such a random history. And then from there, my son got sick. My second, both of my boys were, bo were born at NSF International while I still worked there. My second son, when he was born, we almost lost him. So we got, he got hospitalized and all that. I used up all of my FMLA, so they had to fire me. So they fired me. I ended up staying home for a little bit. In that stay-at-home period, I ended up going to a restaurant to work as a server. Um, and in that period, I realized, mm, I'm not cut out for this. It's a different group of people, right? And I was like, okay, I need something else. I, I need to, like, I wanted to be a mom, but I also wanted to make enough money to, like, have for spring break and go home to Romania in the summers and just, like, extra money, right? Because my husband was taking care of us. He made enough money for the bills and all that, but we didn't have the extra, the trips, right? And I wanted to go to spring break. I wanted to go home to Romania. So I was like, I need something that would be flexible. Um, so my neighbor actually talked to me. She was the marketing director for a title company. And she said, Gogo, you're so social because I had to have Facebook because that's how I stayed in touch with everybody at home, right? I get to see my friends getting married and having kids and going on vacation, et cetera, right? Like just to stay connected to my family at home. And uh, so I was always with Facebook. So she thought I was so social and I would make a great realtor. So she made a recommendation for Real Estate One. I went and interviewed with them. They said they would pay for my um, license if I pass. So I, by far, I'm at zero cost of doing business in real estate. And I passed right away and I was with Real Estate One for seven and a half years. And then I went over to Keller Williams for a hot minute. And then from Keller Williams, I went over to EXP. So I've been with EXP since 2018. So in 11, you, you get this opportunity to get into real estate or somebody encouraged you to get into real estate. Were you, did you consider yourself a good salesperson prior to getting into real estate? What, 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 how did you perceive your you know, you're going to go into real estate, which requires the ability to sell to some degree. Did you think that you were a good salesperson and thought this was a good idea or are you just doing it because you thought it was interesting? So I, I can't necessarily say that I've done my research or how hard can it be to sell real estate, right? Like think of it <laughs> this way, Jason, I was a stay at home mom at the time and I was watching HGTV all day long. Like HGTV yeah. is not a realistic <laughs> representation of what realtors do. They don't knock on your door and the two of them, between the two of them, one collects butterflies and the other sharpens pencils and they qualify for $2 million on the beach. They look at three houses, they buy one. Everybody's so sweet and kind during the whole process. And at the end, they walk you through it and give you a tour. That is not the reality of real estate transactions, right? But that's what I saw on television. So I was like, well, how hard can it be? Right? I didn't think about where are my leads going to come. I didn't even know the words leads. Like, where did, who's going to buy a house with me? I didn't think about that. I was like, that looks really fun. I think I can do that, right? So I went and got my license. And then in my first year, I made a whooping $16,000. Whoop, whoop, go me. 
right? And I probably spent more on gas showing houses. I probably spent more on my fees. I spent a ton in cap and cut because us realtors, they have to pay to a brokerage, right? To You have to pay to be in the game. So um, to answer your question, no, I had no freaking idea what I got into. But so how long? Zero so, so you made 16 grand that first year. What happened year two? What 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 strides did you make to improve in year two? So Soros Loser. Hi, my name is Gogo. I'm a Soros Loser. You ever meet? So after the first year, I realized, hold on a minute, this is much harder than I thought. Right. So then I started interviewing all of the top producers in the office. Like I am teachers pat front and central with a million questions. I have zero. I mean, I would jump into people's as I saw them leave the office. I was like, grab my coat, grab my phone out on the door, jump into the passenger seat. I'm like, I'm going with you. Where are you going? Right. And they were like, what are you doing in my car? Right. But I was like, I want to follow. I want to see the agents or top producers in action. Like I shadowed everybody that would give me the time of the day. I interviewed every top producer in the office of what are you doing? Are you cold calling? Are you door knocking? Are you buying leads? Are you farming an area? Do you have a Facebook business page? Then most of them were like, what's a Facebook business page? Like this is back, you know, talking 2011, right? So I, after I realized that it's harder than I ever thought, right? Then I had to figure out, and on top of it, I started hearing the realistic statistics. 80% of the realtors give up in the first year. And out of the 20% that's left, another 80% gives up in the second year. So real estate is a very hard business. And on top of it, if you don't sell any real estate, you still have fees to pay. So it's costing you every single month. Plus you have to do CE credits because you're a licensed agent. You have to do credit hours, which you have to pay for, right? So it's a cost up front, and you never even sold the house yet. So many agents, unless they had some savings before they got into the industry, they're going to have to leave and get a real job. And it's going to take some time before you start making real money in real estate. So I was like, okay, I don't want to be the statistics. I'm not going to be that 20 percent. If I got into this, if I got myself into this, I'm not going to how fast it. I'm going to be on top of the list or not on the list at all. So then I started researching what does it take? Right. And then after interviewed all of these top producers, I realized a long list of things that I wasn't willing to do or qualified to do or could afford to do. So I'm five foot two little blondie. I am not knocking on anybody's doors. It's stranger danger not happening. Plus dogs and I are not, I mean, I have a dog, but other people's dogs, I don't know. <laughs> That's how I would do on their driveway in high heels. It's Starbucks <laughs> again, right? Um, the next one was farming or buying Zillow leads. It's most agents do. And I realized I can afford that. I don't have $4,000 a month to buy Zillow leads. I just wanted to make $4,000, right? Um, and then it, it, I kind of just went through all of those things and then cold calling was the last and I am not, I mean, even when I never sold a house, I had a chip on my shoulder. I am not begging anyone for their business. They're lucky they get to work with me. I always had that just chip on my shoulder when I had zero experience. Right. So I was like, okay, if I'm not willing to do all these or I can't afford to do all these, then what am I willing to do to be on top of the list and what can I afford? And Facebook was the only thing at the time. Then I, I came easy because it was a generational thing. I, I was much younger. at the, Now we have younger realtors. But when I got into it in 2011, I was 29 years old at the time. We didn't have like the average realtor at the time was 54 years old. So I was like 20. They've been doing real estate as long as I've been alive. Right. So <laughs> it was just a different real estate market. So when I got into social media, that was not something they were willing to do. Or even they didn't think that's going to be a thing one day. Right. So that's what I did. I started Gogo's Real Estate on Facebook and that was my plan of this is how I'm going to make it. And uh, I just stuck it out. I've been made fun of at first. Right. Because people are like, oh, there's Gogo again taking a selfie. Right. But over time, something that was so unique and so different at the time made me my brand. And today they call me the social media queen of real estate. You, you got into Facebook first in 2011, 12 to set up your real estate thing. I remember I was a school teacher in 2010, 10, 11 was my last year teaching school. It's when I started my company. But I remember trying to, in 2009, 2010, I wanted to set up a Facebook page just for my students so I could communicate with them. And, Cause that was kind of the thing. And the school system was absolutely not, we're not encouraging these kids to get on Facebook. And now today I think there's every teacher has a Facebook page. So you dealt with the same thing. You, you, every realtor has got a Facebook page, every, every, everybody out there is doing social media, but you are a cutting edge getting out there. So when did you realize that social media was actually going to pay off? That did, did you have a lead come through that you sold a house to or bought a house for like, when did, did something happen? You're like, Hey, this is actually working. No, I can 
wouldn't say like I realized something. I just always do everything on gut feeling. I believe that God creates us and he knows what skills we have, right? So if God gives me an idea, I believe he knows what he's doing. He gave me the idea because I have the skills to make it a reality. So I don't ever question it. I just assume that I assume the finished product, right? Because I know that God would have not given me the idea if I didn't have the skills. So I've never had like, oh, this is going to be the avenue. I just had a gut feeling and I acted on it. So the gut feeling paid off because now you're the social media queen of real estate. Yeah. You've sold uh, $120 million in just in personal transactions. Is that right? Yes. But Team GoGo last year, so the thousand agents that we have now in my organization that we call Team GoGo, we did five, I think it was $50,000 short of $2 billion in real estate in 2022. $2 billion. So from 200 bucks in your pocket coming over here to take an English class to creating $2 billion worth of revenue, that gets a clap. Everybody should start clapping. This is the this is the American dream. This is the opportunity that you can come over here and be happy. When you're watching Eddie Murphy on 48 Hours, <laughs> he's like, I could go over there and do that. And what I think is interesting for your story, Gogo, is that you watched the movie 48 Hours, and now you're the lady who t- tells people what their hours are worth and to make sure that they don't work hours that they shouldn't. Have you ever thought about that? Let's take a quick break to thank our amazing sponsors for making this podcast possible. As an entrepreneur, I know that you have to deal with sales on a regular basis. I mean, every entrepreneur does. And if you aren't paying attention to sales as an entrepreneur, you're not going to be an entrepreneur for very long. But I've got a sponsor of this show called Dub that helps you bring the personal back to sales. If you want to figure out how to improve content creation, improve client trust, improve your sales process, decrease the sales cycle, because we all know time kills deals. If you want to increase client bookings and increase conversions, you need to take a look at Dub. There's a special offer for Dub for listeners to The Root of All Success at therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub, and that's D-U-B-B. I've been using this for years. I'm a huge fan, and I'm so honored that they're our primary sponsor of the podcast, but they have helped over 60,000 businesses around the world communicate better, to make sales easier, to make sales more personal. And it's built for growing teams. I mean, you can set up video emails, you can set up custom onboarding, you can do admin reporting. You need around video and sales and automation dub is there. You can try Dub now. Your conversions to sales are waiting. All you got to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. And there you're going to get two weeks for free to try Dub. Plus, you're going to get 50% off your first two months of Dub. You can't beat that. So go check it out. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. 40 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had your business in the yellow pages. You remember those things? (laughs) And 30 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had a door-to-door salesman. 20 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had a website. And today, you're not in business unless you're doing social media content. Am I right? Social media content. Social media content in the form of like micro content, which is 30 to 60 second spots on Instagram reels or TikTok or YouTube shorts. That's the way business is done. As a matter of fact, that may be how you found out about this podcast or me as a business coach. This medium that we're using today to communicate what we do is vitally important. And just recording yourself isn't enough. You've got to do it right. And my friends over at Story do it right. And one of the problems with doing it wrong is that you sit around thinking, well, what the heck am I going to record? What am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Like, I don't know what to talk about. Well, story takes all of that away from you. Stop wasting time trying to come up with content because story will send you a video prompt on what to record. You can pick the categories you want to record in, whether it's real estate, entrepreneurship, finance, relationship, leadership, life insurance. It could be anything. Don't waste time on that. And by the way, if you're not confident in talking on video or if the video editing portion takes up way too much of your time, Story will edit the videos to perform well on social media. They add the subtitles, the pop-ups, the zoom cuts. They remove all the filler words like uh and um and uh. They remove the awkward pauses. 
and then they take that video and post it for you. They write the captions, they add the relevant hashtags, and they post it on the platforms that you care about the most. It's exactly what you need to be in business today and to be successful at it. So if you want to learn how to do social media the way the influencers do, you need to go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story. And that's story with two Y's. Why? Because they're awesome. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story, that's S-T-O-R-Y-Y, for 10% off your first three months to try story out. You're going to thank me later. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now, back to the show. Isn't that interesting? That's amazing. And I work 24 hours. I work half now. <laughs> you work half half of what the movie was about. Well, I think you're I think what's interesting is that this whole hour thing, this is probably what's made you more successful than anything else. If I if I'm as a, as a coach, this is not what this is about, but if I'm doing a quick anal- analysis of of you, I would say you are an example of addition by subtraction. If you subtract enough things that aren't meaningful, you will have an addition. There's a law called the law of addition by subtraction. Sometimes when you subtract things, you actually add things. And that's what you've done. You've subtracted all the crap out of your life and as a real estate agent, as a coach, and only did those good things. And now you're doing $2 billion. Listen, somebody I should just run me a check credit for all of the sales, right? Like there's a thousand agents who did the $2 billion of sales, right? But it's an organization. It's the six six degrees of connections that I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So at EXP, we get to build what's called an organization. And I brought 240 agents to the company personally. So those are personal conversations and agents who joined the company because of me personally. And then they brought their friends that grew into a thousand. So the 2 billion is our production together. So talk about your boot camp, your agent attraction, because you just said you brought in 240 something agents into personally through your thing. Tell tell everybody a little bit about your boot camp, because I tell you, for example, my wife right now is going through her licensing. She's decided she wants to get into real estate. She wants to get her license. So she's doing the school right now. So what is your boot camp about this agent attraction boot camp? So first I had Google's boot camp social media. So originally the boot camp started with the idea that I started getting asked to go to events and speak and teach other realtors how to build a brand, how to lead generate with your own brand, like pretty much how to use social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, name it, right? So this is before TikTok. Um, And I realized after the events, people would come and ask me the same questions. Like I felt like a parrot. I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have to answer the question again? Like I was just like, I'm going to lose my mind. If I have to ask the same question five, three times over, I'm going to lose my mind, right? So I was like, okay, I need to record myself in videos, explain everything way down to the detail. And that's the other part when you're building a coaching program, right? Something that comes so natural to you, you might not realize that. Okay, let me back this up. When people, let's say I'm talking about Zapier integrations or creating a YouTube channel or something, right? And then I got a message one day and said, yeah, go, go, but how do I hold the phone? And I was like, oh, uh, oh, <laughs> You want me to go way back, like back to the basics of if you're doing a story or an in YouTube shorts, you have to be vertical. If this video that you're creating is going to be built into a website, you have to do horizontal. Right? Like I didn't even think of that. That for me is just a given. Yeah. But when you do these type of things, when you're actually teaching something, the nitty gritty of how to build something and how something works, like a social media, like a YouTube or an Instagram, right? I had to, re- I realized I'm like, okay, I just have to record myself. I have to walk my throughout self to the staff. So you start at the end and then what did you actually do? Literally step by step to get to the end result and then create videos of every single one. So initially it was social media bootcamp only. And then I started that, I think, in 2017. And then 2018, when I switched to EXP again, I like to win. I like to joke and say, I don't care about winning. I just don't lose. Right? I'm just, I want to be on top of the list. If I'm doing something, I need to be on top of the list. So when I joined and I realized everything that this company offers and all of the things that we have that we can do, right, I was like, okay, I need to be the best at it. So what do I need to do to bring a hundred agents? So I told my sponsor, I'm going to bring a hundred agents. And he said at that time, nobody brought a hundred agents. 
So he said, when you do that, I'll buy you a Rolex. So today I have a very nice Rolex. I don't have it on, but upstairs I have a very nice Rolex for my sponsor. <laughs> so I reached that goal. And then you just kind of get the rhythm of it. And I went from 100 to 240 as of today in four years, right? Which I think makes me the number one woman in the company of all Asian attractors. Um, not official, but when I look at the numbers. And then people started asking me, okay, Gogona, how do you do this? How do you do that? Why do you have a website? Why do you have a link? What is the pink sheet? How do you? And I was like, okay, I can't answer those questions 500 times over. So then I created another bootcamp for agent attraction. And then as you're creating things, you're realizing and you're growing with it, right? So what I realized is that I teach everything literally step by step of how I got to this end result, but I'm teaching very busy realtors how to build websites how to do their trackers, how to have their weekly meetings, how to celebrate their agents, how to order the products to celebrate their agents. And I realized I don't do that. My team does that. I just have the most amazing team who helps me with all this, right? So then for a couple of months, we practiced on some of my agents' websites. And I said, okay, can we build it? And if we can, how long would it take us to build all of these systems and all of these websites? So we have two websites that we build now to our students and we call it the done for you program. The first one is the .com, so your name.com because you need to have one where you can always send people. If somebody asks you, can you come speak at my event? Go to gogobetki.com, invite me to a podcast, gogobetki.com, sell a house, gogobetki.com, join AXP with me, gogobetki.com. Like everything that I do is on my name.com. Everybody should own that. So we build that now for our agents. One of the links on there is their agent attraction link. So if somebody says, hey, Gogo, I want to talk to you about this whole EXP thing, I just send them to gogobatki.com forward slash partner. I just know each of my tabs, each of the links on my website has a thing, right? So we build those. And then eventually, after we started having a ton of agents, I realized that we need a hub. We need somewhere where we can send our agents. So think of it, let's say every Wednesday you have a one-hour production training. It's a Zoom with a password, right? Well, it's fine while you have 20 agents asking you, where's the Zoom link and what's the password? But when you have over a thousand of them and Literally, I would go on one hour Zoom call and I come off and I have 49 text messages. I can't. It's impossible. So I was like, we need to have a hub where we can always send them whatever you need. Do you need the Google Drive? It's on teamgogo.team. Do you need um, the weekly training calendar? It's on teamgogo.team. Do you need um, to onboard your agents? It's on teamgogo.team. Do you need the YouTube private channel where we do all of our recorded trainings, thousands of hours now, teamgogo.team. So now we build a hub for all of our agent attractors as well. So not just we build their .com and we give them all the training of what it is, how to use it, all the mindset systems, processes, trackers, everything is explained. The bootcamp itself, it's over 260 videos. And then now we build them two websites, their .com and the .hub. Very, very good. And, and you said earlier in the show that systems don't take vacation days. Systems don't take sick days. Systems can be relied upon. So you've created the systems what would you what would you say is kind of if you I'm, I'm assuming systems are one of those, but what would you say is your biggest keys to success that have, have helped you unlock two billion dollars in production, 120 million dollars in personal transactions? How did you unlock that? What were the keys to your success? Let me show you. See those books behind me? And then do you see oh let me not dump this again? Do you see those books over there? And then more books over here, and there are books everywhere. So I like to use other people's brain and other people's knowledge. I believe it's a much quicker um, way to success instead of having to learn it on your own and your own skin, right? Because those lessons hurt. <laughs> so learn from other people's life lessons because they don't hurt as much, okay? Um, that and then I'm huge in in-person events, like immersion style, three-day, give me all you know, I'll take notes, I'll come. Like usually if you see me in an event, you think I'm not even paying attention because I'm pretty much doing this the whole time. The reason I'm doing this the whole time is because I'm implementing. So literally I have, I think 17 VAs that work with me full time and some other ones that work with me part time, they are responsible for different compartments, right? Like I have VAs for systems and process. I have VAs for websites. I have VAs for social media. I have VAs for organ, organ, um, operational side, like those kind of things. So depending what I'm trying to implement in that moment, I'm literally messaging that that person who's responsible in that department. And I usually like, hey, here's a screenshot, here's a link, um, figure it out by the time I get home, let's talk about it now on Monday meeting. So I'm a huge implementer, but I feel that events, because if you are home and just kind of watching a live video and things like that, that is different than when you're there and then you immerse and you're paying attention and that's all the only thing on your mind. So I'm huge on events. I did Tony Robbins UPW seven times. I did Business Mastery twice, Date with Destiny once. Um, I 
at, I mean, if I'm interested in something, I will buy a course. I don't care how much it costs. The way I look at it, I okay, here's one that changed my life. When you're looking at something, don't look at it how much it costs. Look at it how much money is it going to make you. Life that's a much that's a much different question, isn't it? If it if it makes you money, it costs you nothing. If I spend seventeen thousand dollars, but I'm going to make three million, would you do it? If I say, hey, give me seventeen thousand, I'll give you like three million, would you do it? Anybody yes. in their freaking right? They were like, can I do it again? Can I do it again? Right? But most people look at it. Oh, but I don't have the seventeen thousand. Well, the reason you don't have the seventeen thousand is because you haven't learned a lesson. If yes. you would know what it takes to make money, you would have the money. So then you have to learn that lesson. You can learn it the hard way on your own over time, or you can go buy somebody else's knowledge and speed up the process, learn everything that now this only works. If you pay attention when you go, you're not at the bar chitty chatting it up with over a, an old fashioned with Joe Schmo over there, right? Like you there, you emerge and then you take action when you come home. If you don't implement what you learned, you wasted that $17,000. So it only works if you do. Yeah. So what, how do you define the key that, how do you find the word rather success? How do you define it? Go, go Becky success means what to you? To me, having the ability to do what I want, whenever I want it, with whoever I want it, and also not have to do it if I don't freaking feel like it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm writing that down. I always record people's answers to this because I've got, so I've got a long list of hundred and 140 plus answers to that question. So the do what I want, what I want with him, I want happens a lot. But what you added there at the end, I don't hear people say that a lot. Not doing it if I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't care how much money is it going to make me. If I don't feel like doing it, I'm not doing it. I get companies reach out to me all the time. Go up, pay you $5,000, just post our product. I mean, $5,000 in five minutes, that's good money. I'm still not doing it. If it's a product that I don't use or love. Because if I do that, I just diluted my brand over $5,000 and I lost their trust. Yeah. So I think the theme here, I think the theme for you is that, you know, what are you worth? How, how do you work 700 hours in a week? <laughs> but really, you're only putting in 24 active hours. I think you've figured, you've figured out how to take action, but only the right actions. That's the key. Take action, but the right ones. Don't take every action. And I think that's... Yeah, you got to take the great actions, the ones that actually are going to move the needle in your life. Well, uh, GoGo can be reached at gogosbootcamp.com or gogosbootcamp.com slash AA for the agent attraction. She's on IG at GoGo's Real Estate. She's also got GoGopreneur, which we didn't talk about the TV show. Why don't we talk about that real quick before we close out the show? You've got a new TV show that's called GoGopreneur on Roku that comes out soon, probably around the time this, this episode hits. So tell everybody about that TV show. So actually you can watch episodes now on gogopreneur.com or you can watch it on your home TV. So it's a new TV network. It's a um, streaming TV television or streaming television network. Uh, it's called your home TV. And I'm one of the shows. I was actually the very first show and very first episode on the network. Um, so the idea with that one, when they reached out to me, I was like, what? am I anymore? I actually had someone ask me on a plane. I was flying and they asked me, uh, what do you do for a living? And I was like, well, what, what am I? <laughs> like, what do I do? Right? Like I do so many different things. Like, do I have a title? Like, what do I do? So when I was thinking, I was like, I'm an entrepreneur because I do so many different things, right? So many different companies. And, and I was like, I'm an entrepreneur. So when I um, got asked to do the TV show, I was like, I don't want to do it real estate ish anymore because I do so many other things besides just real estate. So I was like, okay, I'm going to name it Gogopreneur, go go the brand entrepreneur, go gopreneur. And so the idea with the TV show is literally sharing all of my thoughts and, and having and allowing people to look into my life so they can see it in action. So each episode is a different subject. Some like uh, my next favorite episode that's coming out, not this week, but the next time is the VAs. So all of my VAs literally did videos and they showed them where they work, how they work, why they love working here. How do we do this whole thing together? So I want people to see in and see everything in action. This next episode that's coming out is my board of directors. I spent two years of creating a board of directors of tax attorneys, asset planners, financial advisors, CPAs, bookkeepers, uh, my operation, myself and my husband um, to have quarterly meetings because I felt like I was stuck 
CPA said this, attorney was like, do not do that. Financial advisor was like, no, 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 we need to do this. And I was like, I was in the middle. I'm like, I don't know anything about anything you, you three just said, and I'm supposed to make a decision, right? Not only that, but if you are the type of person that doesn't make the same amount of money, like I don't want to make, a, some people are happy making the same money, 3% raise for the rest of their life. I'm not that person. I'm constantly chasing my next level. So whoever's helping me to make financial decisions, like an asset planner or a tax attorney, right? They need to understand that I'm not planning on making the same amount of money. I'm planning on doubling or tripling that. So when they are telling me how I need to invest to save on my taxable income, they need to understand where we are going, not where we at, right? And also I needed them to communicate with each other. So I created an episode on my board of directors, why that came about, who I use, what's the company in Vegas, what they do for me, those kind of things. So my goal with this TV show is to help people understand all aspects of entrepreneurship, not just selling real estate or whatever I happen to be working in. So that's go, go preneur on Roku. You can check that out on there on Roku. There's going to be coming out soon. In March. Right now you can go to your home TV to check it out, or you can go on gogopreneur.com. Gogopreneur.com. So you can look her up at Gogo's real estate on IG or gogopreneur on IG. Facebook is Gogo's real estate. And you can also look her up at Gogo Betke. And the last name is B E T H K E B E T H K E. She's uh, LinkedIn and YouTube and TikTok on all that at Go Go Betke. Go Go, I want to give you the final word today. What advice would you give to the listener who's an entrepreneur, hasn't really figured out his or her thing yet? They don't know what they should be doing. What would you say to that person? Well, the quote that started the fire in my soul is that if you don't build your dreams, somebody is going to hire you to build theirs. So if you have that fire inside your soul for whatever that is that you want to build, whatever business that you want to do, it is your duty to go do it. There's a reason why God gave you that idea. The question is, do you have the balls to take action? And that's where most people let an idea die. I usually wear a t-shirt that says, don't die with the music inside of you. That's really good. Go, go. It's been such a pleasure meeting you in person at that event. We both spoke at uh, last year here in Nashville. And then, yeah. And then today getting on the show with me. So I'm honored that you've been here today. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to say before we uh, say goodbye today? Anything else you want to add? It was my honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here and uh, let's stay in touch. Let's, uh, let's figure out how we can continue to work together. Sounds good. I think I know a way. Well, there you have it. Another very successful entrepreneur about her journey to success coming from Romania here to the U S just to take a, an English exam and then ended up staying and becoming a real estate and entrepreneur magnate, just an amazing lady created so much wealth and opportunity, not only for herself, but for others, thousand people on her team doing $2 billion worth of real estate transactions in a year. That is impressive. I loved her definitions of success. She said that being able to do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, et cetera. But and also she added not doing what I don't want to do. And I think that's the law of addition by subtraction. You've got to subtract things from your life that you don't need to be doing. There are things that you need to eliminate. I promise you the law of, attra the law of addition by subtraction teaches us that if you subtract the good in your life, subtract this possession, obviously you could subtract the bad, but subtract the bad and the good things in life and only do what is great. You will add more to your life, more money, more fitness, more health, more wealth, more relationships, more psychological and mental wellness. This lady works 700 hours a week, but she only works three days a week. So how's that possible? She's leveraged the power of the law of addition by subtraction. What can you do to subtract things from your life? If that's something you're interested in, that's exactly what I do as a business coach. I help people get to where GoGo -Go is. I help people do that every day as an entrepreneur. How do we subtract things from what you're doing in the day-to-day -day operations of your life so that we can get you to that place where you're living the ideal life? As a matter of fact, that is what the subject of my book, Exit Without Exiting, is. It just came out this month on March 3rd on my birthday. And the book, Exit Without Exiting, can be 
look at, you can go to the realjasonduncan.com slash book and read all about it. But it's three stories of three amazing entrepreneurs who built great businesses, but then had very different lives as a result of the way they built their business. You're going to hear from Edward, from Cheryl, from James about how they built their businesses and what their exit was like. And you'll be surprised to find that you can exit your business without selling it and begin living the exit lifestyle sooner than you ever thought possible. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash book. Learn about why I wrote it, who I wrote it for, and what transformation you can expect once you read that book. So go to therealjasonduncan.com slash book. And then make sure you tune in again next week when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. Until then, I am The Real Jason Duncan, and Jesus is King. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with The Real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Follow Jason on social media at The Real Jason Duncan. Are you an entrepreneur who feels trapped in the weeds of daily operations, not experiencing the freedom you thought you'd have as a business owner? Want to know the way out? Take Jason's free exit readiness assessment to see how close you are to getting ready to experience true freedom and success as an entrepreneur. Go to amireadytoexit.com today. That's amireadytoexit.com. See you again next time here on The Root of All Success.